What's up, Taiwan? I'm Eric Gao with news from here in Taiwan and around the world. Starting off in defense news, the Ming An drills were held in Taiwan's capital of Taipei on Thursday. These annual drills help prepare civilians in case of an attack or natural disaster. And for the first time, representatives from the U.S. were there on the sidelines. Bing Wang reports. Explosions and air sirens go off in Taipei as smoke billows under the landmark Taipei 101 building in the Taiwanese capital. All this during the annual Minan civil defense exercises when the city tests emergency preparedness with an emphasis on wartime efforts. Thousands of civilians participated in the day of the drills, along with dozens of firefighters. And for the first time, there were foreign observers watching the exercises from the sidelines. Taiwan is under constant threat from neighboring China, which claims the island nation as part of its own territory. The U.S. is watching developments here closely and has increased its military presence in the region. But the risk of conflict isn't the only reason for these drills. These Minan exercises are conducted in all of Taiwan's large cities to improve overall civilian readiness. The country is prone to natural disasters such as earthquakes and typhoons, and these drills focus on rescue efforts, mass evacuation of citizens, and backup plans if critical infrastructure is destroyed. Getting civilians to work alongside city personnel and the military is a key component of Taiwan's civil defense strategy, making sure every Taiwanese citizen is equipped, no matter the circumstance, to do what they can to protect themselves and the country. Andy Xu and Bing Wang for Taiwan Plus. Meanwhile, the United States has refused a request to sell Taiwan its most advanced F-35 fighter jets. Taiwan's Air Force Chief of Staff, Cao Jingping, told lawmakers that the U.S. did not provide a reason for the refusal. The F-35 is one of the world's most sophisticated fighter jets. Taiwan is looking to modernize its military to counter China's increasing threat. This comes just days after the U.S. said that it would deliver F-16B fighters to Taiwan two years later than originally expected. To find out more about why the U.S. is reluctant to sell Taiwan its most advanced fighters, Sam Hui talked to Eric Shi, a military expert based in Taipei. Why is F-35 significant to Taiwan's defense? Taiwan主要是对于美国的F-35B比较有兴趣。那F-35B因为它本身第一它具备逆中的特性。那另外它F-35B具有短距离起飞、垂直降落。那因为台湾毕竟现在面对大陆这个全岛都在大陆的岸
then the safety of our Filipino nationals in Taiwan becomes of primordial importance. And so that uh, these EDCA sites will also prove to be useful for us uh, should that uh, terrible occurrence uh, come about. United States senators have proposed new pro-Taiwan legislation. The bill would authorize U.S. President Joe Biden to negotiate a tax deal with Taiwan. This agreement would help avoid double taxation on companies that operate in both countries and help fight tax evasion. The proposal has bipartisan support. Senators are also working on another bill to respond to any Chinese attack on Taiwan and to improve U.S. economic competitiveness against China. Police have arrested eight suspects linked to a scam that netted millions of U.S. dollars. But as John Ventrias reports, some victims say they're not hopeful about getting their money back. Police say this man, Zhang Yaofeng, stole 81 million U.S. dollars from investors. He allegedly convinced 5,000 users of mortgage platform IMB to buy the rights to collect debt from people who defaulted on their loans. But the debts never existed. The whole thing was a scam. And once he had the money, Zhang went into hiding with a stash of luxury goods. Police found him in a hotel in northern Taiwan's Yilan County. They say he has a history of gang activity. He's now in custody, and police have tracked down several of his accomplices, too. So far, 39 of the scam's victims have reported theft. But some victims feel they may never see their money returned. Fallout from the case has spread beyond IMB, the mortgage platform used to trick the investors. IMB is owned by the Chuan Chung Group, a conglomerate, and workers at other companies it owns say they've been the subject of online revenge attacks. Police are now looking at whether the main suspect sold off his real estate to keep it from being confiscated. As some victims try to salvage what they can, the investigation continues. Klein Wong and John Van Trieste for Taiwan Plus. In international news, Japan's Prime Minister Kishida Fumio says it's time to revise his country's constitution to recognize its armed forces. His comments were made in a recorded speech played at a forum in Tokyo on Wednesday, which marked Japan's Constitution Memorial Day. Among the changes Kishida wants is a revision to the article that bans Japan from officially having a military. Kishida said that Japan's defense forces should now have constitutional recognition, citing security challenges. A court in Washington, D.C. has found four members of the far-right group The Proud Boys guilty of seditious conspiracy. The men, including the group's leader, were involved in the storming of the U.S. Capitol on January 6, 2021. That was part of a failed bid to block Congress from certifying President Joe Biden's election victory over Donald Trump. Under U.S. law, seditious conspiracy means a plot to overthrow the government by force. It can carry a sentence of 20 years in prison. Pakistan's foreign minister is making a rare visit to India. Bilawal Bhutto Zardari was greeted by Indian officials in Goa on Thursday. He's the first senior Pakistani official to visit India in 12 years. Relations between the nuclear armed countries have been strained for decades. Bhutto Zardari is attending a meeting of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, which India is hosting this year. The eight-member regional bloc includes Russia and China. Back in Taiwan, a virtual reality film exploring Taiwan's 40-year period under martial law is being shown in Taipei. The exhibition also features a first-time look behind the VR production. Joyce Tseng was there. For four decades starting in the 40s, Taiwan's authoritarian government violently targeted political dissidents in an era known as white terror. It's the focus of this virtual reality film. It's being premiered for the first time with an extended exhibition here in Taipei. The Man Who Couldn't Leave is a virtual reality movie that explores the period of mass suppression, murder and imprisonment of those deemed political dissidents by the nationalist or Kuomintang government. 
A lot remains unknown about this period, including the official death toll. But estimates of the number of people killed by agents of the state ranges from 2,000 to 25,000. The 35-minute VR short follows a political detainee, a character inspired by several documents revealing the lived experiences of those targeted at the time. Chen said the immersive VR format allowed for a deeper portrayal of those imprisoned. After an international tour, the film won a top prize at the Venice Film Festival last year. It's now being shown to the public in Taiwan at Taipei's University of Education's museum. It's being paired with a display of rare artifacts from the time, including letters between detainees and their loved ones. The exhibit also includes an exclusive look behind the production of the film. Through VR technology, the film pushes the limits of storytelling and recalls the silenced sacrifices of the past. It's also a reminder of the struggles for freedom and democracy here in Taiwan. Klein Wong and Joyce Zen for Taiwan Plus. The Pingdong Bluefin Tuna Cultural Festival is kicking off this Saturday with music and, of course, seafood. The festival in the southern county highlights the peak of bluefin tuna season in Taiwan. But this fish is not your typical canned tuna. Its price reflects its quality and rarity. The first catch of the season in Taiwan was sold for 60,000 U.S. dollars. The fish averages about 150 U.S. dollars per pound. Pingdong has marked the bluefin tuna tour season since 2001. This year, the festival will last from May 6th to July 2nd. In other fishy news, massive schools of barracuda are attracting divers to Taiwan's Green Island. Thousands of the fish are swarming in what local diving instructors describe as tornadoes. They say it's pretty rare for the fish to gather in such numbers. While the barracuda swarms are drawing tourists, they are warned not to get too close as the fish may attack humans. Students in China have developed a robotic kissing device that lets couples send affection through their phones. The idea was born out of pandemic lockdowns and shows how the power of intimacy and some silicon can make a difference. Jaime Ocon reports. This device is called the Long Lost Touch. Developed by a group of students in China, these robotic lips let users send kisses through their phones. The inspiration for this device came from the COVID-19 pandemic, when China's government put heavy restrictions on people's movements. Months of lockdowns left many couples separated. Just two weeks after the device was released, they sold over 3,000, with orders for another 20,000. Some couples say the device does help, especially in long-distance relationships. But not everyone feels the same way about the long-lost touch. China has declared the pandemic over, and most couples are free to reunite. Now, they'll have to decide whether to kiss this device goodbye. Eason Chen and Hami Okan for Taiwan Plus. Thanks for watching What's Up Taiwan. Remember to download the Taiwan Plus app for more stories from Taiwan and around the world. Finally, enjoy these images of an adorable leopard cub in India. The cub was separated from its mother and was rescued by Indian forest officials. I'm Eric Gao. Take care and see you next time.